Hey everybody, it's Andy, and we are back in the Maker Lab at Micro Center, and we're getting really close to 2025, but before we get there, it's time to do our annual 3D printer roundup. So what we're gonna be doing is looking at a number of 3D printers over a number of price points and a number of size ranges. As the holidays approach and family time is near, let's take a look at some awesome 3D printers to help accentuate the good times. If you're just getting into 3D printing, I've got two great recommendations for you. The first one I wanna mention is the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini. Now, I'm not gonna get into that right now just because we're gonna have a whole other video just on bamboo printers. So make sure to check out that. We'll leave a link below when that's out and you can find out all you need to know about the A1 Mini. Also in this price range is the Ender 3 V3 SE. This is an amazing first printer for anyone. What I love about it is that out of the box, it has auto leveling and it's a direct drive. So if you want to mess with things like flexible filament, you can do that. The price on both of them should be under around $200 or less. So make sure to check your micro center because we're going to have great deals all throughout the holidays on 3D printing. All right, so let's step it up a little bit and we're in a little bit of a bigger price range and we've got some more size that we can utilize in our 3D prints the Ender 3V3KE. Now the K, I believe, stands for Clipper. So it has the Clipper software built in. That means it's also capable, because of the Wi-Fi radio that's in the hardware as well, to be connected to your network at home and be remotely controlled. That's really the big benefit in taking a step up. These printers are ranging around $200 to 350 so always make sure to check the listing on the Micro Center website for the current price and the best price. Also in this price range slash size range, although this one's a little bit bigger, the Neptune 4 Plus. We love their resin printers and we think their FDM printers are great as well. The cool thing about the Neptune 4 Plus is it is slightly larger. So at a bed volume of 320, by 320 by 385 millimeters, you're gonna be able to start to print larger and larger things. So we've gone kind of from the A1 Mini, which I think is 180 all around, uh, up to 320 by 320. So we're getting close to doubling the size of our first printer. The other cool thing with the Elegoo Neptune is it has a 4.3 inch color touchscreen, automatic bed leveling, uh, and you have the connectivity as you would expect on a printer in this range now. We haven't really talked about speed uh, on these printers, just because they're all pretty much pushing the boundaries of previous printers now, uh, ranging anywhere from 250 to 500. And we'll even see one later that's higher than that. All right, so this is where it starts to get a little bit interesting because this is the first printer on our list that's not bamboo and has multicolor. Multicolor has been all the rage in the past year and a half since bamboo released their X1C with their AMS system. Anycubic calls their AMS the ACE, which stands for the Anycubic Color Engine. What's a little bit different and a little bit unique about a multicolor printer in this price range, say between 350 and 400, this color engine is enclosed versus the AMS light on the A1 and the A1 Mini. Now, there are many benefits to that, um, one being that it keeps humidity down. Now, the AMS will keep humidity down uh, for the X1C, but not actively. So this actually has a dryer box function built in. I assume we're going to see that coming more and more with newer printers as a default. But as of right now, for under $400 to get multicolor with a multicolor box that's also a dryer, this is one you might want to check out. Now, you can buy both the A1 or the A1 Mini as a combo with the AMS Lite or the multicolor system or standalone. And honestly, these printers are great. We're not gonna get into all the details again because we'll see you in another video for that. The prices on these have gotten really good. And I think the quality and the ecosystem of the bamboo world is really great, especially for first time users. So the next printer on our list is the Ender 3 V3 Plus. Now, we didn't talk about the Ender 3 V3 yet. I'd like to call out this plus size because it's got a much larger bed than the V3 or the V3 SE or KE, it's younger brothers. This has a 300 by 300 by 330 millimeter bed. And it's got a unique system, which is a Core XZ, meaning that most of the movement is actually on a vertical plane versus a horizontal plane. It allows for different things to move faster, 
This printer is also running a version of Clipper and has Wi-Fi connectivity as most of these printers do. I think the only printer on this list so far that we've mentioned that doesn't have Wi-Fi is the Ender 3 V3 SE down in that lower price point range. But otherwise, for the most part, now you're able to connect to your Wi-Fi network and control remotely with these printers. This is the Cobra 2 Max, and this comes in at 420 by 420 by 500 millimeters tall. So that's a big bed size. This is gonna take up a good chunk of your workspace. If you're looking for printing things for cosplay, whether it be helmets, shields, armor, et cetera, or even larger prints to do lampshades or whatever you have in mind, this could be the printer for you. And I have to say, coming in at between 379 and 399 is pretty amazing for that scale. So make sure to check out the Anycubic Cobra 2 Max if you're looking for size. So the Neptune Max from Elegoo comes in just slightly under the Anycubic Cobra 2 Max in terms of height, but the width and the depth are at 420 millimeters as well. Now, you're gonna find these two dancing around the same price range, so make sure to check your local micro center for the best current deal. Um, but again, these are two printers that you might wanna consider if you're printing some larger objects, or you have to print a whole bunch of small objects and you would prefer a bigger bed size to make more at once. Although remember, the fastest 3D printer is always another 3D printer. All right, so we're gonna jump away from these large format printers to discuss enclosed printers. Up until this point, we've only been dealing with these open frame style printers. With open frame style printers, you're often limited to what materials you can print. Really going up to ABS is possible and okay, uh, but you're not able to control the temperature of the environment around the ABS, so you have to compensate. With enclosed printers like the Creality K1 series and the Bamboo P1 and X series, you're gonna get the ability to print more difficult materials such as nylons, ASAs, ABSs with more ease. If you're gonna be printing things that require these filaments, you wanna take a look at those models. So again, we'll have them in the list below. The K1E uh, now has the ethernet, so you can attach it to your network. Not a lot of the printers in the lower range that we just talked about have that. The Bamboo Lab P1S is also fantastic. It's put at a great price point, which we'll talk about in our Bamboo overview video. And the X1C has become kind of a de facto classic at this point uh, in terms of its build, in terms that it's enclosed, it has the AMS. Um, so you can buy that as a combo as well. All of these enclosed printers are great if you're trying to go and take the step up from open frame printing. And they are what are called a core XY, meaning that the bed moves up and down while the X and the Y kind of stays in one place. We did way back when, uh, a review or an overview of the K1 Max from Creality. And we've seen a lot of reviews that people love that printer as a large format enclosed option. I am fairly confident we're gonna see more large format enclosed options in the near future from other companies. But until that happens, you may wanna check out the K1 Max as your larger format enclosed, works with nylon, works with ABS works with ASA, works with all of these options. All right, so we have two more printers on the list which are in a category of their own, and we've already done an overview of one of them. The FL Sun S1 and T1 are both considered Delta printers. They don't rely on necessarily the bed moving, but using a triangular mechanism, they move the head around and up and down. The cool thing about this is it takes a little bit of stress off of the head and allows it to move a little bit faster. So I believe these are touting speeds of around 800 millimeters per second or 1200 millimeters per second in the case of the S1. We'll leave a link to that below and check that out. That's coming in around 1299, 1399. It's got a build volume of 320 millimeter diameter across and a height of 430 millimeters. So again, if you're looking to do cosplay stuff and you need it fast, you might wanna check out the S1. Just make sure before you come into your micro center, you check the stock on this one because it's very popular, we know, and we're just getting more of them in. T1 is also a great option and comes in a little bit less and is a little bit less in terms of size. 
So check that one out as well. As I said earlier, we're not gonna cover resin printers in this video. Get into your local Micro Center and talk to one of our 3D champions. They know way more than I could ever know about 3D printing. Talk to them, they'll get you on the right track, whether it's resin or whether it's FDM. And then also ask them about accessories, parts, and filament. For accessories, we've had a lot of cool dryer boxes coming out this year from Creality and others. And we've also brought on 3Doodler. 3Doodler makes 3D printing pens. Now they have a range from a low temperature, which is great for kids, uh, to some pro models, which are great for doing uh, either sculpting type 3D printing or touch-ups on models that have maybe broken or you need to uh, reaffix something. And then we also carry an amazing range of tools, not only for 3D printing, but for computer building, et cetera, et cetera. We've got deburring tools, we've got calipers, we've got scrapers, we've got all, all kinds of stuff. So just get in and check it out. That's it for this year's roundup. Here in the Maker Lab at Micro Center, I am Andy. And if you're buying your first printer, that's great. If you're buying your second printer, even better. And I know some of you out there are probably close to your 60th or more printer. So wherever you are on your 3D printing journey, we're happy to be there with you. Grab some inland filament and let's start 3D printing. And we'll see you next time in the Maker Lab at Micro Center.